My experience with the Unihertz tank has been really one of the most interesting experiences that I have had with a smartphone in a really long time. When they reached out to me and said they wanted to send this thing to me, by the way, this is a little grip slash kickstand thing on the back. So just, you know, ignore that. That doesn't come on it by, uh, by default. Uh, when they reached out and said they wanted to send this thing to me, I was immediately excited because I thought this thing just looks ridiculous and I love ridiculous phones. And then I got the thing and when I took it out of the box, it kind of shifted on me. It went from excitement to, oh my lord, this thing is just too thick. It's too big. It's too heavy. This thing makes my Z Fold 4 look like the most felt thinnest thing in the world. This thing is just not going to be usable for me. But then I started using it. I started messing around with it. And I started coming back around again. The roller coaster began going back up that hill again. And I have actually some really good positive things to share about this phone. And obviously the biggest one is going to be the battery life. Now they say, apparently, you can get 100 days of battery out of this thing. Now I'm assuming that is with their battery saver mode turned on and that's going to reduce some functionality. What I will tell you from my experience is that without battery saver turned on, you are going to get... Even if you're using this thing hard, pushing it, you know, pretty hard, you're going to get not one day, two, three, four, you may get a week out of this thing of like normal usage. And yeah, look, it's got a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. So yeah, you should be getting that long of a battery life. It's absolutely ridiculous. And in fact, I just sold it short. It's 22,000 milliamp hours. And I mean, normally you'd say, well, 2,000 milliamp hours, you short of this phone's battery. Wow, you, you cut it in half. No, with this phone, you barely made a dent in it at all. This thing's battery is ridiculous. And I was able to use that battery in a really like productive sort of way. I'll give you a good example here. Obviously, this is a pretty big screen, 6.81 inch screen. And the NFL playoffs have been going. So you know what I was doing while we were watching, you know, television that my wife wanted to watch? Well, I loaded up YouTube TV and I'll kind of you know, let you see how, you know, quick apps typically load on this thing as it does have a MediaTek processor, which isn't, you know, the best, fastest processor in the world. It does, you know, actually load things quite performantly. I was loading up these playoff games using this little kickstandy guy here on the back like that, setting it down and watching the game while we were watching something else. And let me just tell you, I watched an entire half of a football game, right? All the way through two quarters, all the commercial breaks, all that. And I lost 2% of my battery. 2% of my battery was all that I lost. And we're talking, it wasn't an hour. Like this was like an hour and a half, something like that. 2% with full screen video going. That's ridiculous. The idea that you could take this thing on like a long weekend camping trip, and I mean, it's got this giant flashlight that I'll touch on here in just a minute as well. Use this thing to do everything you need to do with your phone, plus watch a movie, you know, both nights, or maybe it's a three-day camping trip. Watch a full movie three nights in a row. Use your flashlight. Use, I think there's a compass built in here. Do all of these things and come home with like, 70% battery still left. Maybe you're going to actually open up this flap down here and plug your other phone or a tablet or something else into this and charge that device. I think it charges at about five watts. Charge your other devices with this. Still come home with more than half a battery. That's absolutely plausible to me. That's how that would go. The battery is un believable as it should be. Let's talk about that flashlight though, because it's pretty ridiculous. I've got a sample here to show you to kind of show it off. It's insane. Okay, so it is now about 6.10. The sun has almost fully set. This is my Microsoft Surface Duo 2. We are going to turn on the flashlight function for this and show you how bright that is. Can you tell that it is on probably a little bit, but it is not a particularly bright flashlight. Now we're going to pull out the Unihertz tank. And this device has a 1200 lumen flashlight on the back. We're going to press and hold that button to turn it on and see how bright this thing actually is. I believe that's going to be pretty evidently bright. Now we're going to actually double click it to make it even brighter. How insane is that? Pretty impressive. 
And once again, just to really drive home the point of this thing's flashlight, now that it is really, really dark, let's turn that flashlight on, ladies and gentlemen, and let's see that we have now fully illuminated the world around us. And now let's double click it. And we're even brighter than we were before. The flashlight on this thing is, I mean, look, it's a bright flashlight, period. For a phone, this thing is unbelievable. Now, of course, when we're talking about a giant flash, right above that is the camera array. And the camera array on paper sounds like it might be pretty good. A 108 megapixel sensor for that camera. Now, there is a 2 megapixel macro, boo, and a 20 megapixel IR or infrared camera with some infrared fill lights. So let's look at some photo samples here because this is actually very, very important because you may look at that, you know, like I said, 108 megapixels and you may assume that the camera performance is going to be like really good and it's it's not i mean i'll just tell you that straight out it's not very good but at the same time what did you expect did you actually think that this are you buying this because you want to have pixel quality photography no you're not so it, it's it's kind of what i expected it to be but let's like i said let's look at some samples here so here's one taken in somewhat of a lower light scenario and you can see here that there is a lot of grain this is just not a well processed photo doesn't look particularly great it does take the pictures pretty quickly but you will find that a lot of the time they're slightly out of focus the weird things happen with the focus so not great in low light stepping outside again it's just not doing a great job of pulling out the details in the shadows here it, it was bright enough that it really should have been able to do better than that but it, it's you know it's pretty mid Here's another one that kind of demonstrates that weird focus thing that happens. It just kind of smears and doesn't, just really doesn't do a great job. The colors are really muted. Not a whole lot to rave about here. What about the macro camera? Well, the macro camera can focus pretty, you know, at pretty close uh, distances, but it's only two megapixels and the result is really bad colors. Just not a great looking image. Honestly, I would have taken that macro camera off completely and maybe, I don't know, save $20 or something like that. But there is that IR camera, which is actually really interesting and goes back to the use I have in mind of this device. This is a device you're going to bring out with you if you're camping or doing something like that. You're out, the sun has gone down, you've got your giant flashlight and you have night vision. Here's that same picture of my television. Let's turn on IR mode and well, you can see what that's going to look like. And it's not incredibly well focused, but let me show you what it looks like when the lights are totally out. This picture was taken on the tank. You can barely see anything at all. Flipping over to IR mode and hey, look at that. There's a staircase there. You can actually see what's going on. To my naked eye, I could see virtually nothing. And now I'm gonna show you a video that demonstrates exactly that. And here we are back on that Unihertz tank using the IR mode. And the things that you can now see that you could not see before are quite astonishing. And in fact, I will tell you, I cannot see any of this stuff in front of me with my eye. However, if I point this down, I now feel quite confident that I know where I am stepping, despite the fact that I cannot see my own feet in the real world. This is an extremely impressive thing, and I think could be extremely useful. What if you find yourself stranded out in the woods somewhere? You've got an incredible flashlight. You have the ability to see in the dark, even though it does lose focus sometimes. You're, you'll find your focus eventually. Really, really cool. And I think that that's really the use case for this device. I can't really imagine somebody just straight up daily driving this thing unless you're someone that works out in the field and you're constantly in a scenario where you need these features. But to me, for the price that it costs, which let's go to this Amazon listing here. We are looking at $399. To have this thing around, I think makes a lot of sense. For me, like, you know, we like to go hiking during the times in the year when that makes sense to do. And the idea of bringing this thing along with me to have just in case something happens is a great idea. It's, you know, I usually bring a battery bank with me. Well, why would I bring a battery bank? I've got an extra SIM. Just bring this thing with me. This is my phone. This has SOS flashlight on it. It's got the IR. It's got the giant battery to charge my other stuff with that's all I'm going to need. Now, granted, this is much more expensive than a battery bank. Absolutely. So I can't tell you, you know, that that's just what everyone should be doing, but it is a really nice option to have. Now, I've talked a lot about the phone. Let's kind of do a quick look 
at the hardware itself so you can kind of get a good idea of what we're looking at here. So we have a hole punch selfie camera here, which I mean, the quality on it is about what you would expect. I guess I should show you a sample of it really quickly. Let's load up the camera app and you can see that in action. And let's flip this around and let's take a selfie, which I will overlay on the screen here for just a moment as I'm talking, I'm sure that it looks about how you would expect. Now I am running Nova Launcher on here and I've themed it and you know that's why it looks the way it looks. Now you can see though that the performance is fine. It actually runs better than you might expect it, it to run given that it is using a MediaTek processor. It actually does really quite well. There is an earpiece speaker up there. There is another speaker on the back. So you actually do get stereo sound and the stereo sound is quite loud and is again a bit better than I expected it to be. You have a fingerprint scanner on the power button over here on the side, which uh, you can see is relatively fast, not incredible, but it's good enough. You have two volume buttons up here, which are textured. On the other side, you have your flashlight button, which needs to be held for a little while to trigger that flashlight. And then you have a programmable button that you can have do whatever you want it to do just about. So on mine, it, a single click does nothing because I kept accidentally pressing it, so I, I turn that off. A double click should turn on the normal flashlight, just the regular little one. So that's there for me because I like having a, a flashlight that is reasonable and then a crazy bright flashlight if I wanted to have that. So that's what I programmed it to do. You can do whatever you want though. A long press, I've got mine set to trigger the Google Assistant and that does work really quite well. And you can see here on the back what it looks like, big flashlight camera array, pretty basic in terms of that. And you can also see how incredibly thick this thing is. I daily drive a Surface Duo 2 and even fold it over, it is significantly thinner than this device. All in all, if the use case I have described makes sense to you, you're gonna have a hard time finding anything that's gonna be better than this device. Something to have with you in those sorts of camping trips or if you're working out in the field or if you're just a really big person, like I have small hands and this thing is just ridiculous to me. But if you're like a really big guy and you just want to have a battery that you're just never gonna have to think about, you wanna have a rugged phone that is like military grade that you could throw at a wall and not have to worry about breaking, maybe this thing makes a ton of sense to you as well. Huge shout out to Unihertz for sending the tank over for me to review. Link to purchase in the description down below. Guys, I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.